Hello there, science friends, and welcome once again to Photoshop for the Scientist. Thanks for watching. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to quantify your bands in a DNA gel. And a lot of the time, this functionality may be present in some lab software that you have, like if you have a gel doc or something like that. But if you have a, I don't know, just an image or a scan document or a photo or something, or if you just want to do it in Photoshop, I'm going to show you just exactly how it can be done. So let's get right to it. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your image is in grayscale. And to do that, you go up to image mode and select grayscale, which mine already is, so good for me. And next we want to check to make sure that uh, you haven't over or underexposed your image because uh, we want to make sure that we're not missing out on any potential uh, data here. So to do that, uh, we want to look at the histogram, which uh, normally I have a button here that has disappeared, so I'm going to go up to Window and select Histogram. And so you can see here, and I'm actually going to go up to Expanded View. So what you see here is a histogram showing basically all of the values in my image from uh, black, which is over here, to white. And so you can see we've got a lot of sort of dark pixels, um, which are obviously coming from the background here. And then we have sort of this spike of white pixels, or whitish pixels, which are all coming from my bands. And so I want to make sure that uh, my white pixels are not right off the edge of this histogram, or, or in other words, uh, so that they're not hitting uh, 255. Because if that happens, that means that uh, we've gone straight white and we've probably overexposed and we've lost uh, some potential um, data there. So because it's kind of tough to tell how close to the edge that is, I'm going to show you a little trick. And to do this, what you want to do is go down to your Adjustment Layer button here, and we want to create a Levels Adjustment Layer. And so you can see, again, our histogram has been repeated here. And to check if we have any clipped pixels, you want to hold the Alt key and click on this uh, white arrow on the right-hand side here. And so you can see immediately the screen goes black there. And if we start dragging to the left, you can see that some pixels start to appear around uh, 252. And if we keep dragging, you can see all my bands sort of start to materialize. But what this is telling me is that uh, the brightest pixel that I have is... 252 it looks like which means I'm not at 255 which means I have no clipping uh, which means that I'm good to go so we can hit the trash can on this because we don't need it anymore and now we can get into actually we're not going to get into the measurement yet uh, first we're going to do what I think is not entirely necessary for um, taking your actual measurements, but it is good practice um, in case you need to come back and look at your data again later. And so what we're going to do is create some selections and then save them off in the channels panel here, which uh, you can see I've already done um, because I had to reshoot this video because I screwed something up. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of these, and i got to delete them one by one, so give me a second here. Okay, so I've deleted them. And, okay, so we want to uh, save these selections just in case, like I said, if you need to come back and look at your data and figure out what you were measuring and why you did it, uh, trust me, it's one of those things that uh, if you do it now, you'll thank yourself later. So to do this, you're going to select the rectangular marquee tool, and we're going to want to create a kind of a close selection around the band here, uh, the first band that we're interested in. And so I should mention my top uh, row of bands here are my loading control, which I clearly did a poor job because they're pretty different. And then my bottom lane here is the uh, DNA that I'm interested in, and uh, my positive control and then my negative control. But anyways, first we select this first band, and we want to go up and say Save Selection under Select. And I'm going to call this Control 1, and hit OK. And you can see in my channels tab here. It gets saved off in this selection. And then we just want to move this box from band to band, uh, doing the same thing. Call this control 2. And I'm going to go ahead and cut forward because it's going to be super boring for you to watch me do this. So I will see you in a few seconds. Okay, now that I've done all the control bands, which you can see I got lazy and just started typing C3 instead of control. That's how I roll. Uh, we want to go down and do the sample bands. So it's going to be the exact same thing. You go down, save selection, call this S1, hit OK, and I will go ahead and do the rest. OK, now that the sample ones are done, the last uh, set of selections we want to do are sort of the background area 
uh, the, so we can subtract that over our calculations. And uh, I think it's probably best practice, or what I like to do, is select an area as close as possible to the bands uh, for each one. Um, so I'm just looking above each band, and I'm going to be taking a selection there too. So once again, the exact same process of save selection, we'll call this BG1. And now I will go ahead and do the rest. Okay, so it's a little labor intensive, and I should say if you uh, set up a keyboard shortcut for save selection, it should uh, speed things up for you. Okay, so I'm going to hit Control D to clear that selection. And the next thing we want to do is perform the actual measurements. And I should mention that this is one of those things that's only available in Photoshop CC, uh, maybe in CS6, I'm not sure exactly, or uh, Photoshop Extended for earlier versions. Um, if you just have, for instance, Photoshop CS3, you're not going to have these measurement functions. So I probably should have told you that earlier on, um, but you know now. So we want to use the measurement uh, functions here. And to get to those, you want to go to Window and select Measurement Log. And you'll see a little window pop up here. And we want to set this up by going to the little menu here and selecting uh, Select Data Points. It's going to fall off the side of the screen here, but you're going to want to click the uh, Custom. Yeah, it's a menu item that says Custom here. And we're going to say what points we want. So. Uh, a lot of these, actually most of these are unnecessary, so we don't need date and time or document or source, scale. Scale units are um, going to be pixels, doesn't really matter. I'll leave them there. Um, yeah, these things we're not really interested. Count area, perimeter, circularity. No, no, no. Uh, gray value, I'm going to leave. We're not going to use it. Just tired of clicking. Uh, I'm going to get rid of histogram. Uh, the one that we're really interested in, so if you leave anything checked, let it be integrated density. And let's get rid of these two. And so what integrated density is, you'll see if the little tooltip pops up here, is the sum of the gray values and the featured and the feature measured. So what that means is basically in the selection that we take, it's going to measure every pixel or the value of every pixel from 0 to 255, like we saw in the histogram and it's going to add them all up in our selection. So if you think of it, uh, if you have a lot of white pixels, that's going to be a lot of 255 values, um, which is going to give you a bigger number than if you, say, had very few white pixels or many grayer pixels, which will be closer to zero. And so that's going to be sort of uh, our way to measure band intensity. So I'm going to hit OK, and we want to load up our selections here. So to do that, you go to your channels panel where all of your uh, selections are saved and you hold the control key and click the little uh, layer preview here and that will load your selection that we saved earlier. And now it's just a matter of clicking record measurements and you can see it pop up here and here's our in integrated density value of 160,225. And so now it's uh, again just a matter of going through each one of these and doing the same thing. Um, I should say that if you set up an action, you could cycle through these pretty quickly. And I do have a uh, video on actions, one of my earlier videos that you can go back and watch if you uh, need a hand with that. So I'm just going to go through. I can't talk and do this at the same time. So I'm going to go through and do these on my own, and I will check back with you shortly. Okay, that was fun. Went through and clicked that a bunch of times. So now you can see I've got a big list of uh, data here, and you can't really do much more in Photoshop, but what we want to do is export this data into anywhere, really. It, it, it exports into a text file, which we can import into Excel. So to do that, you click the little menu again here, and you'll say Select All, and then you'll say Export Selected, and you can call it whatever you like. I'm going to say Measurements, and hit Enter. And I'm going to load this into Photoshop, if you'll just, sorry, I'll load this into Excel, if you just give me a second here. Okay, so we've got our data imported into Excel here, and you can see our integrated density values uh, along this column here. And I'm just going to reposition them. So we've got our first uh, five here are the control bands. The next five are the sample bands. And then the last five here are the background bands. So it's just a matter of going through and subtracting the background out from our other two values. So just like this. We'll drag that down. We'll do the same thing here. Very exciting stuff here. 
And so now with these two values, we just take the ratio of our sample band over our control band so that we're normalizing. And now if we wanted to go ahead and create a chart, there you go. You can see this chart is basically representative of what our band intensity showed in the in the image. So if I go back to Photoshop, you know, let's scoot this down a bit. You can see sort of the brightest band here, followed by one that's uh, slightly less bright, followed by almost nothing, and then barely something, and then something a little brighter. And you can see that's exactly how things look in uh, Excel here. So now it's just a matter of repeating that experiment a couple times. So you have a appropriate number of uh, repeats, and there you have it. You've analyzed your bands. So, with that, I guess I will sign off by... S oh, well, actually, before I sign off, I should say, as I always do, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below, as always. I've done a pretty good job responding to the total of maybe three comments that I've had on my videos. So, I've got a pretty good track record. But now I'm ready to sign off, and I will do so by saying... You worked hard to get that data of yours, so why not work a little harder and do some data analysis? And if you can, why not do that data analysis in Photoshop? Because uh, working in Photoshop is fun. Uh, okay, anyways, look. Thanks for watching, everybody. I will see you all next time.